Um, I've been in conversations with him. We're going to be convening here in 2016 to talk about and deal with mental health. We hope that you will join us here in District 7 to come back and have some much needed conversations about mental health and mental illness and how we can better deal with this. So without further ado, I present to you our very own District Attorney, Susan Hawk. It would not be possible without their support and their hard work to make this happen. First, I have Ms. Carmen White. She's one of the administ administrative chiefs of the DA's office. She's head over the mental health division as well. I have Mr. Kevin Brooks. He is our trial bureau chief, and he is a, uh, a long-term attorney. He's a defense attorney. He's worked at the DA's office, and he's been a part of problem-solving courts and diversion programs for a long time. So he has been very key to starting this, this unit. We have Ms. Julie Turnbull. She will be uh, the chief over the reformative justice diversion programs. We have Ms. Stephanie Gonzalez. She is uh, the chief of community outreach. We have Brittany Dunn here somewhere in the back. Um, and who's been very key. And they've all been instrumental to making this happen. So when I took office in January 1st, I made a commitment to our community to be innovative and to use this office not only to prosecute dangerous criminals, but also to solve the bigger problems of how we use this office to make our communities stronger and safer. That's why I'm here to talk, that's what I'm here today to talk to you about. The job of making our communities safer and stronger by forming one of the nation's biggest DA-driven pre-adjudication diversion units in the country. And we call this our new reformative justice unit. The simple fact is that in many cases, prosecution and incarceration are not the best solution. Mass incarceration have not made us safer, and in fact, sending more people to prison has weakened our most at-risk communities by promoting poverty, racial disparity, dividing families, and creating long-term employment and housing issues for so many first-time nonviolent offenders. As a criminal court judge, for more than 10 years, I watched the, those who came through our criminal justice system. I saw how lives of families and individuals were impacted time and time again. I saw how so many of these first-time offenders, due to their own actions, were at a crossroads in their life. And I saw how our system would deal with them simply by sending them to prison. In many cases, for a year or two, and their life was forever changed. But when we're talking about so many young first-time offenders who make a bad decision, or when we're talking about someone with an undiagnosed or untreated mental illness, we really need to ask ourselves, who are we punishing? Yes, we are taking that offender off our streets for a very short amount of time, but let's really think about what we're doing. We're sending this offender to a state facility where the cost of the taxpayers is $20,000 per year for each individual to take care of. We're sending this offender to a facility where he's surrounded by other felons, a peer group where committing crimes is normal and acceptable. We're sending this offender to a jail and forever lab labeling them as a convicted felon, making it less likely that they can get a job, making it harder for them to find a place to live. We're sending this offender to jail and making it more likely that they will need government assistance in the future, and more likely that they will live in poverty. By sending these offenders to jail, we also increase the likelihood that they will commit an offense in the future. There is a much better way. What if we use just a fraction of those resources to help these first-time nonviolent offenders get back on track? As a judge, I created the first felony mental health diversion court for violent offenders. This program was designed to serve the higher risk offenders, individuals diagnosed with mental illness along with substance abuse. These defendants received the medical, counseling, and substance abuse services they desperately needed to keep out of trouble with the law. And we were able to use state grants to fund a year-long program 
And most importantly, we were able to help individuals get back on track, reducing recidivism among this group of offenders by nearly 70%. So I've seen diversion work, and I've had a front row seat to these programs. And my experience as a judge is a foundation for this new unit. And I know based on my firsthand experience as a judge that these programs are going to make a difference. It can make us safer, and it can bring, it can help make communities stronger, and I believe that these sort of diversion programs that the Reformative Justice Unit will lead are the future of our criminal justice system. The new Reformative Justice Unit will focus on three key areas. The first will be AIM. It stands for Achieve, Inspire, Motivate. Those are for our young offenders between the ages of 18 and 25. The second program is called SET for the mentally ill individuals. It stands for Stabilize, Engagement, and Transition. And then the, the third program, or the third part of the uh, Reformative Justice Unit is called CARE, Citizens Against Recidivism. Citizens Against Recidivism. This program that is called AIM, that's geared toward the young offenders, will target young, young offenders between the ages of 18 and 25, and will provide a path to healthy, positive life. Diversion candidates in this program will be required, required to complete a 12-month program, which will include, include life skills, GED and vocational training, parenting classes, community service, and cognitive therapy and substance abuse therapy, therapy for cases where their services are needed. The focus of this program is education and jobs. As part of the AIM program, diversion candidates will be required to obtain a GED or a job before their prosecution is dismissed and further expunged. The SEP program for the mentally ill offender will target offenders affected by mental illness, and this diversion program will accept offenders with diagnosed mental health issues. In a collaborative effort with MetroCare, the DA's office will lead an intensive intervention program designed to stabilize the offender and create a wellness program that is sustainable, which will dramatically reduce the chances of recidivism. As part of the SEP program, diversion candidates will be required to complete a 12-month program that focus on, focuses on assessing the resources needed for a healthier lifestyle, including house, housing, health care, and support. And then requires a diversion candidate to maintain these new programs or these new habits for six to 12 months before their cases will be dismissed and expunged. As part of the SET program, 25 candidates will be expanded as they prove to be successful and the DA's office is able to add more resources and funding for these pilot programs. Our conservative est estimate is there will be approximately, well, our conservative estimate is that there's approximately 30% of the individuals that are booked in into jail are diagnosed with mental illness. And 15,000 cases, 15,000 felony cases are committed by young offenders every single year. So the, the potential of this impact of this new unit is huge. It will literally shift the focus of our office to preventing future crimes and prompt us to ask ourselves what we can do to help this person make a contribution to the community and to the society. And finally, I want to make it clear that we understand that there are offenders who belong in prison. Just last week, I tried a terrible murder case where the boyfriend stabbed his girlfriend 39 times. So I am firmly committed to keeping dangerous criminals off our street. That's why habitual offenders, aggravated cases, and cases involving guns, family violence, and child abuse won't qualify for any of these types of conversion units. Thank you for coming here today, and I'm, answer, I'm happy to talk to you about anything. But first, lastly, let me talk to you about the CARE unit. This is called Citizens Against Recidivism, the third component of the Reformative Justice Unit. It is a community outreach effort that will use existing nonprofit pro non programs, our DA and school program, and our Citizens Prosecutor Academy to recruit, identify, and empower citizen leaders who will engage with the DA's office on behalf of the community to share thoughts and ideas on how to address the core issues that cause crime. This key group who will become guardians of the community will be invited to host and moderate discussions with diversion candidates in an effort to reintegrate those offenders back into their 
communities in a positive manner. As a pre-conviction diversion program, the Reformative Justice Unit will take candidate referrals from law enforcement agencies, internal DA office recommendations, and courts and defense attorneys. And when I talked about the AIM program earlier, I want to um, announce Judge Brandon, Brandon Birmingham, who will be presiding over um, the AIM program for young offenders, and he has volunteered his time to do so. So we are very grateful for him for participating in our young offenders program. So as we know, mass incarcerations have not made us safer. In fact, sending more people to prison has weakened our most at-risk communities, and we are here to talk about our reformative justice unit, to answer your questions, because we are so excited to launch this program, and we have, hope to have the 25 offenders in each program identified by January 1st. We know that that seems like a small amount, and it does, but um, this is a pilot program, and we are hoping as we show that we are more successful, that we will be successful, that we will receive more funding and resources available. So with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Yes. Hi, uh, I am a citizen of, of Allison County. As of 18 months ago, I was uh, detained by the guy at Allison Police Department and anxiety. On the front lines, what will the SIP program do to educate the police officers that can positively identify a mental illness versus just erratic behavior and be able to, um, uh, I guess, uh, one of those cases through to be your set program. And that's what we are going to talk about. These three programs, AIM, SET, and then the CARE, Revolving Citizens Against Recidivism. And they will be like guardians. They'll go out in the community and talk about these different programs. But we um, we have a relationship with law enforcement and because we're the, we're the district attorney's office. And that's one of the things that we've changed is having a relationship with the DA's office, explaining that this, these types of programs exist and, um, and make sure that they understand that certain citizens will be eligible for the SEP program. And so um, whatever we can do to get in the community, and that's why I'm here today talking to you, is that we are dedicated to going into the community and talking about what we're doing and understanding that this is the pilot program. But you know, we are only limited by our resources that are given to us. But I've made a commitment that we want to double, um, triple our numbers by the end of the year um, because I know that these programs will be successful because I watched it every single day in my courtroom. And that's one of the reasons I ran for DA. Thank you very much. You Are you talking about 50 people or 75 people initially? 50 people. 50 people. And you want to double that by the end of the well, year? I want to try to have, you know, as many case... We're limited by the case managers that are provided to us through a grant. And Metro Garrett provided a grant with us where they gave us one case manager and one full-time assessor that when individuals booked into jail, this will speed the process along much quicker, that they will get an assessment and determine whether or not they'll be eligible for the program or not. So as we know, there are thousands of people that could benefit from this program. That's why we're, we have to start off small, and we plan to double these numbers and triple these numbers. That is my goal. Um, and I am, I'm sure by the infrastructure that we have created, that we're going to be successful. Judge. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on what this gentleman asked you, uh, because in, in a lot of cases, you know, people who may not be aware of this, or, and I know you talked about outreach, but how do you get to the point where before somebody is charged with a crime who has a mental illness who is nonviolent, so that it doesn't even get to the point where it, it reaches your office? To educate the law enforcement agencies that this is what we're doing, and talk to them and communicate with them. It's but know what happened right automatically when someone's booked into jail, that they, if they have a mental illness, it's identified. And we at the DA's office, from the prosecution side, not from the defense side, which normally happens, and then they, they contact the specialty court or contact the, um, the diversion program, we're doing it from the prosecution side, which is pretty unheard of. Is this we're, going on right now? This is going to be launched by January 1st. Okay. So we're able to flag and identify the mentally the mental 
mentally ill offender who is arrested upon bookend, and we hate we we hope to get a list of these names within hours of bookend, and then we can identify these folks and who we can help. And I'm saying this is from the prosecution side. So this is um this is a new approach, and it's what I've talked about time and time again. This goes to pre preventing crime. It's not just prosecuting when it's come to, when there already is a victim or there already is a new felony case filed. This goes to the very beginning of what can we do to prevent it from happening in the future. How will uh, you determine if there is a mental illness? Well, a lot of times when they're put into jail, if they are they are uh, enrolled in North Star, which is a privatized indigent health care. If they're enrolled in North Star, they'll be flagged and identified as a mentally ill offender. And we receive that information, mm. and that's what we're working on, to receive that information as quickly as we can so we can divert that individual out of jail um, you know, within a matter of days into programs. But there's, like I said, this is brand new. So there's some kinks that we're going to have to right. work through. But um, we're dedicated to doing that. Is there a plan now for people who aren't in that system? 